Welcome to the Scoliosis Specialist Podcast, where we discuss science-based treatment for scoliosis. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Brian Olette with Scoliosis Specialist of Georgia. Today uh, in this podcast, we have a special guest in from Dallas, Texas, uh, Dr. David Brown. Welcome. Thank you for uh, having me. Um, Doc, how long have you been practicing now? 20 years. 20 years. And you went, where did you go to school? Uh, undergrad, University of Texas at Austin, med school, UT Southwestern in Dallas. Staying in Texas. Staying in Texas. Staying in Texas. Did my uh, residency at John Peter Smith Hospital Systems in Fort Worth. And then did one year Texas. outside of Texas in San Diego for my pediatric uh, orthopedic fellowship. Wow. Wow. Well, and still in Dallas and was uh, willing to fly all the way from Texas to Atlanta today just to do a podcast with us. And we really appreciate you know, the effort and the time that you're giving us. I um, um, super appreciate that. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So we just did a long podcast. I mean, it was, I guess it was a 40 minute podcast talking about scoliosis and um, something we left out of that was kind of a combination of things we use to treat scoliosis because we know there are uh, rigid bracing has been out for 100 plus years. There's what I learned recently. There's over 360 types of hard braces on the market. It seems like uh, a doctor figures something out, wants to build one, and then just calls it whatever it is wherever he lives, right? Providence, Charleston, right? Um, right. Boston, all kinds of braces. Um, so we talked earlier about the only dynamic brace, I should say the only dynamic brace with multiple research projects on the market. It's called spine core. We use spine core on every patient, uh, no matter what. So we have some kind of neuromuscular reeducation during the day. Sometimes we can use it full time. Um, others, I would recommend a nighttime brace. Uh, just to get some overcorrection. So, for instance, if I have a patient that might be, you know, 10 years old, curve is 30, 40 degrees, you know, pre menses, mother's had surgery, so there's a family history. My feeling is that the experience of 30 years in scoliosis, you've been practicing for 20 years in scoliosis, my feeling is that's a very high risk of progression, right? So I'm using spine core, but I in in spine core is more of a derotation neuromuscular reeducation brace, but we can't force any kind of correction in there. With the rigid brace at night, we're forcing some correction to allow for some straighter growth, and then use spine core during the day. So the combination, since we've included that nighttime brace, we've gotten a lot more correction, a lot better result, which is nice. So we can we have that ammo if we need it. You've been using rigid braces for? Most of my career. Most of your career. What would you say the most important thing in a rigid brace is for you, if you were looking at a rigid brace? Compliance. Compliance, yeah. yeah. So, and, and some of it's the curve type. There, one reason there are so many braces, I was once told anytime there are lots of options, it's because none of them work. <laughs> and so, and that's not necessarily true. Rigid right. braces probably have a role and, and there, and, a lot of those, like you said, are just duplicates of other braces and copycats of other braces. But there are certain curves, you know, high thoracic curves. One of the reasons I like spine core is because you're grabbing the shoulders, you can actually treat thoracic curves. But most rigid braces, the, the old Milwaukee brace that went up and grabbed your head and your neck, uh, that the compliance is zero. So you're, if compliance is zero, you're not going to get anyone to get any correction. And, so and let's talk about that for a second, sure. right? Because if you're looking at Milwaukee, even though that was the only option at the time, right? So, right? so if you've got a really high curve in the thoracic spine, it's in between the shoulders. Like, how do you get to that, right? So you can't really get to it with a hard brace. Even the ones that we make, we can't get there. Right. So Milwaukee came out and said, well, what we have to do is put some metal rods up here and really traction out the head. Yes. They're correct. That's right. But how barbaric is that thing? And they have to wear it. I will tell you, every one of my patients that has called, parents had said, 
My child was in that Milwaukee brace, literally from the doctor's office to the car. Yeah. We took it off in the car. We Never Googled. We're looking. We're searching to find this. And what I like about it, about spine core, is that it is high, and you usually have a shoulder discrepancy up, forward, rotation, things like that. In spine core, we have a bolero that comes over the shoulder so we can pull back and down. We can actually get some treatment of that higher curve without having to use the Milwaukee brace. And again, like you said, now we have compliance. Right. Right. And so I, I, over my career, the toughest curves, I used to always say if I can keep the lower part of the spine as straight as possible and avoid surgery on the lower part, that was always what was important to me because I wanted to maintain mobility. Right. And when you fuse the spine, you've lost that mobility. And so I, I was almost willing to give up correction. One, it's hard to gain correct, not, not, not even, it's hard to prevent progression of the curve when it's a thoracic curve or a high thoracic curve because you don't have something grabbing the shoulders. You can't get above the curve to give a counter force with a rigid brace. Even the, the kind of mid thoracic curves, you have to get so high up under the axilla or the armpit for, for the brace that it's not well tolerated by many patients. You, they get numbness in their, their hand, um, just pressure that's uncomfortable. And so like the Milwaukee brace, you probably make it to the car and that's the last time you wear it. Right. And so uh, the, for you, the best brace is the one that they'll wear. And so, you know, I, I've, I've gone between using a Charleston nighttime bending brace because, for kids that don't want to wear it to school. And I'm going after just that lumbar curve because right. it's not going to treat the, the thoracic curve to kids who say, well, I don't want to sleep bent all the way to my to the side. And so I, I don't mind wearing it at school and using a rigid Boston brace that went up higher um, over the last few years, Providence and some of the other uh, braces that have come out solve some small problems that those braces didn't do as well, but they're all along the same kind of principles of how you're trying to treat scoliosis. So it's interesting that you said that because what you said is you're trying to keep the lower curve straighter. Right. And you'd give up a little bit of the top curve to keep the lower straighter and so this is this is all about management of a scoliosis case and it's very important extremely important for every doctor and i all my centers across the country i try to teach this and i try to help them to understand hey that child's 12 right now but the way the curves are set up they're going to have problems as an adult so i understand this is thoracic there's a counter curve down in the lumbar We've got to get that lumbar as straight as we can, or at least we've got to get T12 over S1, T12 over the sacrum, create more strength, more stability so they can function. And that's all about managing the case, right? right? And so sometimes when I'm looking at a patient, I'm trying to decide and try to figure out, I've done the exam, I've got the x-ray, and I'm looking, what is the best thing? How can we treat this? And how are we gonna get the best outcome at the end? And sometimes I just have to sit there for a while and look how they're going to respond and look at the best way to do it. You can't just throw a brace on them, right? So sometimes I'll look and go, my main goal in this needs to get that T12 over that S1, maintain that, and then get as much correction as I can up top or, or treat as much as I can up top to stop the progression of that curve. But I think we should be able to do that there because at the end of the day, as soon as they become an adult, see, treating an adolescent is completely different than treating an adult, right? Treating an adolescent with a 30 degree curve is, I really try to go after that 30 degree curve because I don't want it to get worse. At the same time, as that patient becomes an adult, the 30 degrees up top is pretty stable. They've got the ribs, they've got the vertebra, the ribs, the sternum. It's fairly stable up there, but Anything down below, right. it's like that snake from, from T12 to L5, there's nothing there. Right. And so it becomes unstable. And then, so a patient that you may look at at 12 years old with a thoracic curve, that's your focus. But if you're not looking at managing the lumbar or the lower, they can still have problems as an adult, right? right. So we're treating... 
you complete you're treating adolescents and adults completely different and i and i see a lot of things out there that that don't they just treat the same and it's what we try to avoid so we use something at night called the cmp brace it's cmp stands for corrective movement principle which is extremely important to us because every scoliosis adolescent scoliosis that we see and I, I probably shouldn't say every mostly i know you're not an every right term doctor but mostly if it's an adolescent idiopathic scoliosis we can find what drove the curve right we can find there's a genetic insult that that uh it, it, the, and we can find the cause, whereas it's... And the location. In the location, yep. right? And so w w when doing that, then we, we can choose which curve is more important to treat as well. Then we need something more sometimes, or we can offer... We, we have something to offer the parents, right? We can do, you know, one brace. Is, what else would you do? You know, well, if we see any progression with this, we can go in. We can get a nighttime brace on them. I like to use this as um, nighttime only because I like to go for overcorrection, get as much correction as we can by bending and derotating. The key, the only reason I use this brace and no other rigid brace is because of the openings. So we have an article, I've, in a previous podcast I discussed an article where they did some research at hospitals when they put a completely, in, they completely encase the rib cage in a brace, trying to hold it and keep it from progressing, uh, but can't get any more correction, right? It's not corrective, it's stop progression. Others push the curve or try to open the curve, but it's closed on this side, so there's nowhere to push anything. What I like about this is if I, de -re -re if I have a young child and I derotate the rib cage and I push the rib cage, I can put it in here and then as they breathe, they have a place to breathe so it's easier to wear. No one's ever complained. So I've got a place where they can breathe and if they're young enough and the bones aren't deformed permanently, meaning we can get some some correction in the deformity of the rib cage, this is how we do it, right? Because we can push that in there and allow them to breathe. And then what's also nice, if we can show the camera, and if we use a nighttime only, we can pat it everywhere so it's more, uh, more compliance, more comfortable. And then if you can see this little wedge in here, I can also add wedges in certain areas to derotate or push even more which means you don't have to buy multiple of these every time they might, you know, grow or gain a little weight or lose a little weight or something happens. Um, they've worked their way in. Oh, this isn't doing as much anymore. I can add a pad instead of another 4,000. I can add a free pad and get more correction as well. So I really like the idea of the corrective movement principle. It's the same principle as we use with, with spine core. And uh, another thing that I like is uh, this piece here. We can't put it on all braces because some are too low and the configuration we can't put on. But this is, you know, at night they sleep and they turn, right? So we don't want it to be moving around and shifting and not holding the curves where it should be. So we have this device here that even without the straps keep it from moving, right? So this is one of the reasons we use this, um, and, <clears throat> and we go for as much correction as we can. So what we found is if we can get a young child. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe answer this question for me. I want the public, I want everybody to know this. If you can change my mind on this, then great, because it'll make me feel better about a lot of other doctors out there. I use a rigid brace to get over correction so I can open up the curve. And when I open up the curve, I allow, they take some pressure off the inside of the curve. So that next growth spurt, there's not so much pressure there that it can't grow. So it just keeps growing like this. If I can open up enough 
where that delay in the ossification center was in the vertebra, I can open that up and I can get some growth there and it can grow straighter. I have a lot of people calling me that are 60, 65, 70, even 50 year olds. Their doc's putting them in a rigid brace 12 to 20 hours a day. I have a degenerative spine with arthritic changes, bone spurs, rigid, because when that happens, spine becomes rigid. Right. And the rigidity creates pain. And doctors are putting adults in hard braces. Does that make sense? I don't treat adults. And so I, I would have to, my it's guessing only, that it's mostly rigid and the little bit of motion that they hurt, that they have hurts. And so it's a pain relieving procedure is, is my guess that they're, they're trying to get the, to not have that little bit of facet motion or something that's painful. So they put them in a brace so it doesn't move and then it doesn't hurt. It's not going to treat, it's not going to prevent further degeneration. It's not going to get correction. But they have but, things like an LSO brace for that, right? You've right. got most adults have low back pain with the scoliosis, right. even if the curves in the thoracic spine, the pains in the lumbar spine as adults. Right. Right. So they have things like LSO braces that you can wrap around and put on that tend to do exactly what you said. It's a pain relief, but it doesn't, it, they can still move. Right. Yeah. And so it, it gives the support to the, uh, facets and the nerves. I can't figure out putting a whole trunk body cast on a adult patient is yeah. good for them. In pediatric orthopedics, we treat them till they're done growing and then we stop bracing. Right. And the whole, the whole idea of bracing is you're trying to prevent them from getting to a magnitude that's going to need surgery. Right. And so once they finish growing, typically if that, if that curve is below 50 and it's not continuing to progress, you could have a 30 degree curve that continues to progress even after they're done growing because they're way off center. Right. Um, uh, but, but if they're fairly well balanced in a 50 degree curve and you don't see further progression, there's no benefit of continuing to wear a brace at, at that point. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of answers my question for me and, and I'm still against yeah. hard bracing adults. Um, you won't see any of my patients. Uh, in a hard brace. And I, we, we get a lot of calls with complaints, right? People are complaining. I was put in this brace. I spent all this money for this brace and I'm worse. Right. And so, I think the public just needs to know that it's it's not a good idea uh, to do something like that. But um, so <clears throat> um, using CMP corrective movement principle, I think the good idea with this is uh, derotating right in a rigid brace. And we just spoke about this, and um, um, we're always working on seeing if we can improve and do more derotation because I think that's what got you involved mostly are interested in the spine core brace because we can do so much derotation and detorsion. CMP is corrective movement principles, right? Those principles are the ones right. derived from spine core's uh, goals. Yes. That if you can incorporate those into your rigid bracing, then right. th that allows you to, to get the overcorrection that you're trying to. Right. And so... You know, I just made a call over to Spine Corps because we had just we were just speaking, and then you asked me. Um, you're in the room with me many times. You're there. You see what we do. We see how the, the we we can put them in this corrective movement principle to see how flexible the spine may be, um, and then we choose what brace is best or or how we can treat configuration. it. Configuration. Yeah, the configuration. But we can get a lot of derotation with the and detorsion with spine core. And you were kind of asking me today is, can we get that much with rigid braces? And if we can, then that's something we need to do. So I put in a call to spine core today to ask the principles of, listen, they've been making braces for 50 years, right? They've been doing hard braces for 50 years. Um, they know what they're doing. They're gonna be, they're, the people over there are gonna give me the bottom line of why, how, um, in everything they do because they know it, they know the business. So hopefully we'll get that phone call back today and I'll have those answers for you. All right. Um, but, um, but again, just thanks for coming in. Thanks for liking what we do. Thanks for supporting what we do. Thanks for 
letting us practice in your office. We wish you were in Atlanta and, uh, and could help and see our patients here as well. Because we do refer to orthopedic surgeons often. We've got some really good surgeons in Atlanta. We don't, you know, refer back and forth. There's no, uh, I always tell the patient, if I refer you to an orthopedic surgeon, it's because he's good, right? We have right. people like Dr. DeVito, very well known in Atlanta, phenomenal surgeon, um, great bedside manner. I always get a good response when I send somebody to them. Um, we don't have a working relationship. It's not, I don't refer to him because he's referring to me and we pat each other's back. We, we, we don't have any of that. We just, he's good. So I give him, I give him, uh, um, business, right? I, I know that my patient will be taken care of if I send him there, just the same as, as you. And so, um, everybody watching, just so you know, we have, um, it, it's just not bracing it's not just treating scoliosis we're working with orthopedic surgeons we're getting more detailed information we're getting more studies and we're getting more brains on everything that we're doing and so um this is a lot of fun for me i don't know about you i am i love the exchange of of knowledge so you know it's been um, great i've really appreciated it. also it's turned into a great friendship because we're passionate about the same thing and so if you have any other questions um, feel free to give us a call you can call us um, the 800 number will pop up you can get a hold of our uh, assistant 404-863-6363 you can go to our website those numbers are posted on the website you can see pictures of the brace you can see you know your testimonials you can see our reviews you can see you know research papers you can see everything you need to see at scoliosisfix.com. Give us a call and we'd love to talk about your case.